So, you found your dog squatting down several times a day to urinate with little or no urine coming out. He seems to be in pain and very uncomfortable. And when you look closely, you also notice a little blood in his urine. Your dog may be suffering from a bladder stone. Watch this video to find out what that means and what you can do to help him. Hey guys, Dr. Peacher. I am a veterinarian from South Africa. Urinary stones, also called urolifts, is a condition in which stones are formed in the urinary tract all the way from the kidneys down the ureters into the bladder and out of the bladder into the urethra. They may either be single large stones or a collection of stones that range in size from sand-like grains to gravel. Now, bladder stones usually start out small, but over time they can grow both in number and in size. Dogs that have bladder stones usually show clinical signs that are secondary to the pain and discomfort caused by the stone bouncing around inside the bladder. And these clinical signs can include things like urinary accidents, frequent attempts to urinate without producing much urine, painful straining when urinating, bloody discoloration of urine, and frequent leaking around the urinary opening. Now, if your dog squats down to urinate, but no urine comes out, it is considered an emergency and you should rush your dog to the vet as soon as possible, as this may indicate a urinary tract obstruction, which can quickly become life-threatening. Now, there are several different types of bladder stones that form for several different reasons and therefore also requires various forms of treatment and stages for prevention. Bladder stones develop in a dog's urinary tract when minerals are concentrated in the urine and then crystallize to form tiny crystals, which then irritate the bladder lining, causing the production of mucus, which then causes these crystals to stick together, forming clusters, which eventually enlarge and harden to form the stones. Most bladder stones in dogs are made from struvite, calcium oxalate, urate or cysteine crystals and just like most diseases some breeds are more susceptible than others due to the way that ammonia magnesium phosphorus calcium and uric acid are metabolized in their systems the most common cause of bladder stones in dogs is probably due to a urinary tract infection that has been left untreated for far too long certain bacteria like staphylococcus which is often found in utis produce an enzyme called urease and this enzyme increases the concentration of magnesium and phosphorus minerals that are needed to form struvite stones. If your dog suffers from diabetes mellitus, the body will leak glucose or in other words sugar into the urine and this sugar will make the urine an ideal environment for bacteria to grow and replicate in and therefore increasing the risk of developing struvite stones. If your dog suffers from a disease that causes an abnormal amount of calcium in the blood, such as an anal gland carcinoma, lymphoma or Addison's disease, this may predispose them to develop calcium stones. And if your dog has been given excessive supplements like vitamin D or calcium in the diet, this can also predispose the dog to developing calcium oxalate stones. Now the clinical signs that you would typically see with bladder stones are not really specific to bladder stones as these clinical signs can often also be seen with many other diseases affecting the urinary tract as well, which I explain in detail in this video. It is therefore really important that your vet gets a thorough history from you with regards to your dog's urinating behavior as well as perform a proper physical examination to evaluate the dog's whole body, not just the urinary tract. Now, often with bladder stones, your vet may either feel a small thickened bladder that is the result of chronic irritation, or if the bladder is blocked, he may feel a large firm bladder, which again, could be life-threatening. After this, Depending on what your vet gathered from the history and the physical exam, he may recommend additional tests to be performed. Firstly, 
he might collect a urine sample from the dog to perform a urine analysis where he uses an instrument called a refractometer to look at the urine specific gravity which basically detects the kidney's ability to concentrate the urine, a urine depth stick to determine the urine's pH and to look for the presence of protein, blood, glucose and ketones in the urine. He will look at a drop of urine under a microscope for any urinary crystals which might give him an idea of what type of bladder stone your dog may have. And then finally he will spin down the urine in a machine called a centrifuge and then stain it to look for any signs of bacteria or white blood cells. These tests are all really important in order to determine the presence of a urinary tract infection and if he just wants to make double sure he may also send a urine sample to the lab for bacterial culture to see exactly what type of bacterial infection he is dealing with. After this, your vet may recommend taking abdominal x-rays where you can usually see the presence of struvite, calcium oxalate, calcium phosphate and silicate stones inside the bladder. Now, other stones like urate, cysteine and xanthine are not always visible on x-rays because the mineral compositions do not really reflect the x-ray beams correctly. So in these cases, he might also suggest an abdominal ultrasound where all the bladder stones can be visualized by the way that they reflect the ultrasonic waves, which we call acoustic shattering, or by means of a radiographic contrast study, which is a special x-ray technique that uses a dye or contrast medium to try and outline the stones within the bladder. If your vet detected any other abnormalities that are cause of concern, like for instance, your dog is completely unable to urinate, is urinating blood, or is not eating at all, he might also suggest running some blood tests to specifically look at the levels of calcium, urea and electrolytes inside the bloodstream. Now some bladder stones have distinct shapes whilst others kind of look very similar. So in order to establish a proper treatment plan, your vet may also consider sending a bladder stone sample to a special lab for analysis in order to get a proper diagnosis. These bladder stones can usually be collected by either inserting a small endoscope through the urethra or by a procedure called voiding urohydropropulsion. Now the treatment for bladder stones really depends on what type of stone is present. For struvite stones, which usually form when the pH of your dog's urine is too high, the stones and crystals may be dissolved completely just by putting your dog on a special therapeutic diet like the Royal Canin SO diet, but this can take several weeks to months to completely dissolve. If the available prescription diets are not appropriate for your dog, your vet may prescribe medications that will result in urinary acidification or supplements that can be added to your dog's diet in order to help acidify the urine. If your vet detected a concurrent urinary tract bacterial infection, you may also put your dog on a course of antibiotics and anti-inflammatories. But if your dog has calcium oxalate stones, which usually form when the pH of your dog's urine is too low, it won't resolve with a special diet and therefore it either needs to be removed surgically by literally cutting into the bladder and manually taking them out or by means of a relatively new procedure called extracorporeal shock weight lithotripsy where the stones are broken up into little pieces with ultrasonic shock waves which would hopefully then cause them to be small enough to pass through the urethra out of the bladder. Now once the bladder stones are gone, diet plays an extremely important role in preventing them from returning. Manufacturers like Rolkenin and Hills have spent several decades researching therapeutic diets and the best maintenance diets for dogs who are prone to developing bladder stones, in my opinion, is the CD Multicare prescription diet from Hills. but your vet should be able to advise you on the right diet for your specific dog. Now it is important that if your pet has been put on a prescribed therapeutic diet that he should not be allowed to eat any other types of food without the permission from your vet as this may cause bladder stones to return. Now regardless of the type of stone, if the stones developed to such an extent that your dog's bladder is completely blocked off, thereby causing him not to be able to urinate anymore, your dog 
will need to be admitted for intensive care where he will likely receive intravenous fluid therapy, electrolyte supplementation, as well as a urinary catheter to help stabilize him. This is an emergency situation as if your dog cannot urinate, his bladder will firstly inflate like a balloon causing the muscle fibers in the bladder wall to potentially stretch beyond repair and sometimes even rupturing causing life-threatening inflammation of the abdomen due to urine leakage. Secondly, all the toxic substances that your kidneys try to get rid of in the urine will now be reabsorbed into the bloodstream causing your dog to become very sick and potentially leading to multiple organ failure and death if left too long. And thirdly, kidneys play a vital role in regulating blood pressure and electrolyte concentrations. So if they cannot function properly, your dog will quickly develop an imbalance in its metabolic functions, which could potentially also lead to death. So after your dog is stabilized, he may need to go into surgery to have the stones manually removed by means of a procedure called a cystotomy. Otherwise, he might just re-block again, causing stress and physical pain to your dog and stress and financial pain to you as his owner, as these surgeries can become quite expensive, especially when they are combined with intensive care. Now, apart from a special diet, medication and potential surgery, encouraging your dog to drink more water is also really important to prevent future bladder stones since crystals are less likely to form in dilute urine, therefore allowing them to dissolve or to be flushed out from the system before they have any time to organize into actual stones. For this reason, your vet may also recommend the canned wet food versions of these therapeutic diets over the dry kibble ones. Thanks for watching guys. Let me know down in comments if your dog ever suffered from bladder stones and what you and your vet did to help him. Have a lucky day. Cheers.